Trellising is hugely important. It doesn't matter if you have something that has tendrils like a pumpkin or a squash or a pea, or if you have something that climbs such as a pole bean. Things like tomatoes, as we've discussed before, actually benefit from trellising. Things like zucchini or peppers also benefit from some form of support. Now, the reasons why trellising makes a big difference actually comes down to many different factors. For example, the photosynthetic capture that a plant is able to achieve when it's trellised is much higher. The plant being able to be upright and exposed to more sunlight can allow for more photosynthesis, which ultimately turns into more flowers and fruits. Not to mention the ease of harvest, being able to very quickly identify that fruit is ready or that fruit is just even there in general is key. And trellising allows us to have a really good look at whether or not this is necessary. Now you can also mix in the fact that pruning is much easier because you can see things like runners or leaves that are touching the soil surface. And this ultimately translates into disease prevention, whether that be ease of being able to see whether or not there is a pest and whether or not that pest needs to be managed, picked off or, or some sort of spray or diatomaceous earth needs to be added, etc., and so forth. But we can also prevent against bacterial and potential fungal issues when we have a really good look at the plant. Now in my yard, I use a number of different trellising methods. However, there are some things that work better for plants, for really specific plants, when compared to others. So today's video, I'm gonna go through all the different trellising mechanisms that I have to give you an idea of what you may wanna choose based on the garden that you have planted. Today's video is sponsored by TinkTube, and TinkTube is a Canadian company that actually takes your design, not just trellises. It could be a bookshelf for a house, or a playground for children, or literally, you think of it, and their engineers will be able to come up with a design for you. They have the connectors, and then you can choose to purchase the conduit for it, or you can get everything shipped to you. Now. I'm doing one trellis in this case using the tank tube setup. We'll discuss why I'm choosing tank tube over what my past setup was, but literally send them your ideas and they'll be able to walk you through exactly what bits and bobs you need to make your design happen. So I'm gonna walk you through a bunch of trellises, but keep in mind, these are all very easily built regardless of how I built them and tank tube probably has an easier way to do it than what I've done. <laughs> so, so if you wanna see what I made with my tank tube, then stick around to the end because you love it. Okay, trellis design number one is a simple A-frame. This bad boy was made out of some spare aluminum square tubing that my husband had and chicken wire. It's pretty basic, but ultimately it's very sturdy, meaning I can put some big plants on this without having to worry. If I had wood or some other structure that wasn't necessarily as sound, I would be able to do that. So this structure here, because it is in a frame and it's actually pushing against the soil and the sides of the box, it's able to allow me to put things like pumpkins or larger sized fruits in place. Keep in mind that if you choose to trellis a pumpkin or something that has a large hard squash on it, a winter squash on it, is the actual weight of the fruit. I will need to give this a sling to hold that fruit up and the middle A-frame design allows me to do this. I've tried this before with more of like a box frame style and any fruits on the top, if you don't have big pumpkins in particular, if you, or watermelons, if you don't have a really good box structure that's structurally sound, it will begin to sag in the middle. So keep that in mind if you go for a box structure, you may want to have supports in the middle. But A-frame works wonderfully and I'll show you some close-ups of what this looks like. If you've watched my videos for fall and spring and that sort of thing, you probably already have a pretty good idea of what the structure looks like, but A-frame, metal, great for supporting those larger sized winter squash. Okay, next up we actually have just a very classic pole. Now you can use bamboo stakes, metal stakes, or you can use twirlers, like the ones that have like a corkscrew on them. All of them, in my opinion, work very similar. I personally don't like the corkscrew ones. They, I've snapped plants on the corkscrew ones, if we're being, just being totally honest, and that's probably more so my personality. I'm very often in a rush, or I just, I want things to be easy, and so 
being able, like having to meticulously wrap it around. Not my favorite form of steak, but just a very classic like bamboo steak works wonderfully. What I will say is these were great for determinant uh, tomatoes, zucchinis, peppers, sunflowers, but they do not work well for determinants and that is solely because they aren't necessarily strong enough or sometimes even tall enough to take on a determinant tomato. Unless of course you have more of a pole pole such as this one here. This tomato plant, by the way, it's a it's a cherry, a millions cherry. It is so I'm five foot eight ish, a little maybe a little over five foot eight. <laughs> it's all the way up there. This fence, this fence here, is got to be at least eight feet. This one on the side here, yeah, like eight eight ish feet. And it's going up and over that. So that's gonna be like a 10 foot tall plant at this point. Huge, massive, and you can see why a, a pole like this is going to work, but a bamboo steak isn't. But the volume of tomatoes I'm getting is like millions, cherries. Oh my goodness. That's worth it. Okay, next up, <laughs> you guys are gonna laugh at this, but the cage. So this cage back here is uh, definitely leaning. It's now officially busted on the weld and I know this I've always known this I thought that was a determinant to tomato turns out it's it's not I thought it was gonna be like a smaller Roma variety that I had it was like a plum determinant Roma variety that I had it labeled as turns out it wasn't that at all and it's some sort of beef steak I'm not really sure update when it's ready but it's breaking <laughs> the actual tomato cage and tomato cages work wonderfully for smaller sized tomatoes, but for your big bad boys, it's just not not the, the best. However, tomato cages do work very nicely for zucchinis as well as determinate cucumbers and peppers. So those three, don't just throw your tomato cages out, utilize them for those plants. The next one is cattle gate or chicken wire that is just in a straight up fashion. This works very nicely for things like pole beans or cucumbers, anything with tendrils that is lighter in nature. Peas, it also works very nicely for. Now, these can be reused year after year. In particular, if you get the cattle gate versions of them, they are easy to uninstall, they're easy to install, they're incredibly mobile, so you can allow for crop rotation, whereas that A-frame, not as mobile, not as easy to incorporate crop rotation with it. So definitely something to think about there. I will say the downfall of that is, however, it cannot support larger sized fruit unless you really pony up and get the stronger cattle gate type version. So last year you guys watched me actually put this puppeteering structure in place and I used wood. It's worked really really well. However, it is bowing in some senses and the heavier and the bigger the tomatoes get, the more and more it pulls the sides in. I could have corrected this with just a center beam of wood, but ultimately whenever wood connects with soil, you eventually end up with something that's going to rot, regardless of how hard you try. I don't really want treated wood in my garden. So this is where the tank tube setup comes in. So I'm just taking everything apart inside the kit and I'm thinking to myself, okay, I gotta make sure I keep the labels with the parts so I remember what to do. No, 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 no. Tank tube is so smart. <laughs> they actually stamp the parts. So that's super convenient. It allows me to puppeteer. I had one of the engineers over there actually help me design this. I took a photo of what I currently had set up and then told them what I was looking for and this is what they helped me design. Now, this structure is much more hardy. It's not going to simply decompose and it allows me to put these really heavy determinant tomatoes in place. One thing I'm gonna say, just starting to put this together, this stuff is so hardy I it makes me want like I want to do a greenhouse or like a low tunnel with it because I feel like it would be able to withstand like snow the thing that would rip would be the probably the greenhouse cover before this collapsing under snowfall I don't know this stuff it seems really good quality 
Now these beds, I like to grow beefsteaks and um, you know, ones that are just like hanging with fruit so I can can and preserve. And without the proper structure, I cannot allow this to happen. It's very difficult for me to have this occur if I don't have that really intense structure in place. So this is great for someone who's looking to puppeteer heavier fruits such as determinant tomatoes. Without proper support in the case of like a puppeteering setup, we tend to see that tomatoes don't do as well. They won't produce as much fruit and the fruit sitting on the ground could be exploited by critters such as squirrels or mice rats if you have them or bugs and so I do like to keep my tomatoes up off the ground and the puppeteering setup allows me to very easily trim and manipulate that plan to help me achieve the greatest result. This feature is actually really nice too because if you don't tighten it all the way you could put your taller veggies in the back so in this case it would be going this way or I would have something that's trellising to about 10 feet versus something in the front that's trellising a little lower, maybe something more determinant in nature, but this is this is nice because it allows me to set it as needed. The setup for Tink Tube is incredibly easy. Not only does it come with the instructions, but it also is just like it's plug and play type thing. It's very easily laid out. I just literally put it together. It's so, so simple. And so if I can do it, anyone can do it because I am not a builder type person and they made it so easy. And like I said, pretty much all of these structures that I've shown you today, regardless of the trellising type, you could make with the tank tube. So if you had a design in mind and you just wanted to have everything look really uniform, instead of having like bits and bobs all over the garden, then I would actually just send in a request tell them what trellis types you're looking at and they will very easily be able to design you um, with what parts you need and that sort of thing. I would, I personally would go for eight foot plus if you're doing tomatoes or any sort of winter squash on it or cucumber because they do get that tall. If you're going for more like peas or determinant cucumbers or de determinant tomatoes, you could go to a height of about six feet or less. You could even go four feet in some cases. Um, but if you're doing determinate, indeterminate tomatoes, really just like go to the max because if you get a good year, you want them to be able to climb and climb and climb until they've completely exhausted their resources. Anyways, I wanna thank TinkTube for supporting this video as well as you guys for watching. So hit that subscribe button, check out the TinkTube link down below. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.